Hey, Mike, good to see you. Um, I know we talked and you kind of jumped around this off season. Uh, if you had to distill it, what, what was the area of, of your game that, that kind of demanded the most attention that you put the mo most work into? I mean, yeah, I think uh, the, the, the two spots offensively that I worked on was um, my ball handling, you know, creating, creating shots off of the dribble, separation moves, and then a lot of work out of the mid post. You know, I saw some different matchups in the playoffs, smaller guys on me. So trying to get comfortable with go-to moves in that mid-post area, you know, like Melo does, people people like that, you know. When, when there's a mismatch, that's a good spot to go to. So those are probably the two main areas offensively. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. <clears throat> hey, Mike, good to see you, man. Um, you worked with, uh, you spent time with Steph Curry this summer. Uh, could you just tell us what that experience was like? What did you guys work on? What were your biggest takeaways? Just all the things. Yeah, so I spent a week out there with Steph working out in the Bay. Um, brought my brother with me, my little brother, Coben, who's playing at DU. But um, it was great. I mean, we just got it in every day, early in the morning, and sometimes we go back at night. Um, <clears throat> A lot of shooting, high intensity shooting workouts, but also, you know, moves up the dribble. Steph's biggest attribute is how good of shape he's in. So, you know, we were running around game speed shots and just really getting after it. Every shooting comp every shooting drill was a competition as well. So we were shooting against each other um, and keeping track of our wins, see who would win at the end of the day. Um, and it was just super fun. You know, me and Steph go back to when I used to go to his camps in high school. So that's how I know Steph. Um, and we've stayed, you know, in touch since then. So it was good to get that working with him. Um, and yeah, we were actually supposed to go uh, work out these last few days in LA, but I decided to come back to Denver a little early. Um, but yeah, that's my guy. And that's something that I'll probably try to do in the off season moving forward, because it was great work. Chris Marlowe, Altitude Sports. Hey, Michael. Uh, you, you referred to your, your workouts and your workouts with Steph and improving your offensive game. I'm curious, most people think that for the Nuggets to take a big step, they need to be better defensively. I'm wondering, is that something individually you could practice in the offseason? And did you practice defense in the offseason? Yeah, I mean, my trainer had me doing some stuff. It's very hard um, to, to emulate guarding NBA superstars, you know, and just workouts. But a lot of that stuff comes in the form of what you do in the weight room, you know, your agility work, um, flexibility, um, things like that can really translate into defense, I feel like. So there were times where I was getting guys in the gym playing one-on-one, -on -one, really trying to work on different techniques, things like that. Um, but it's hard when you when then you see KD or you see some of these really good NBA players, it's just hard to really simulate that. Um, but it was definitely some stuff we talked about, film we watched, because like you said, we, we got a really good team offensively. Um, there needs some, to be some improvement from me and the team uh, moving forward defensively. So that definitely was a, a focus uh, for sure. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Uh, you mentioned going back to Denver early to work out. What have you seen from some of the other guys in those early runs? And specifically, Aaron Gordon just mentioned that he had been kind of hampered by injuries last season. Can you see some change in him? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I've been here. I haven't uh, I haven't got out there and played yet. But um, watching the guys, I'm really impressed with Aaron the day that I saw him play, the way he's moving. He looks strong and he looks healthy. So that was really, really good to see. Um, Man, PJ Monte looks solid. Nicola looks like Nicola. Looks like he hasn't stopped since the season. Bull Bull looks really well. Um, you know, he's scoring, blocking shots, you know, playing with a good attitude, a good energy about him. So that's really good to see. I'm um, trying to stay in his ear just because Bull Bull, you know, he could be a, a, he could be a part of this team and help us do big things. You know, it's just going to take a mindset change, which I think that he's ready to embrace. So I'm trying to text him, tell him to hang out with me, come to the gym with me at night, <clears throat> things like that, because, man, that kid is very talented. So I've been impressed with, with those guys. Christos Saltas, SDNA Greece. Hey, Michael, hope you're doing well. How better player you feel since uh, last season, both uh, 
mentally and physically? And do you feel ready to take your game to another level this season? Yeah, no doubt. I definitely feel better. You know, I don't really stop working. So being able to just work out and know more about what I knew about the NBA game than last year, you know, it's definitely going to pay dividends. Those playoffs uh, games are going to play dividends, you know, being guarded by different dudes, seeing different things, it's going to pay off. So <clears throat> one thing for me, I think uh, a lot of film work is going to be beneficial, but also, you know, getting on the court and working on your weaknesses. I think a lot of people are scared to work on their weaknesses. I hear mine and I like, I like when people point those out to me so that I can try to get better at them because no player ends up being great if they only work on their strengths. You know, I think that the majority of your time should be working on your strengths because that's what got you in the first place. Um, but then as you, as you get that time in the off season, you should be working on your weaknesses as well. <clears throat> Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Mike, um, I know when we talked, you said you weren't stressed about your contract situation in the least. You weren't, uh, you know, letting it kind of hold you back or worry, worry you. Um, do you want to get an extension done before the season start? How, how much is that a priority for you? Dude, this is, you know, it's, it's a thing that's on the radar, but, you know, I try to let my agent do his job and just, you know, I want to be, I'm in the loop, you know, so I'm talking with my agent, talking with Tim, those guys. Um, but for me, it's just it's God's time and when it's supposed to happen, it'll happen. I'm not going to try to rush it. All I'm going to worry about is getting ready, getting geared up for the season. And then I'm, and that's what I hire my agent for to figure those things out. <clears throat> I love basketball. So it's, it's not too stressful for me about, you know, the money stuff. Of course, that's part of it. But, you know, I'm just trying to stay in the gym and get better and get ready for the season. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. Hey, Mike, can you just give us an idea of how you feel physically going into training camp and just how hampered were you in that Phoenix series, especially uh, when the season was ending? You know, that, that, see, that Phoenix series, like I should have, if it was any other time besides playoff time, I definitely would have taken a few days because like I had, I had tweaked something and I just felt totally off. So every movement, everything was just kind of, like, yeah, I wasn't me, so then that, that played a part in me not feeling like myself, not performing my best for my team. But it was playoff time, so you got to gut through it. Um, but, you know, probably a week or two after we lost, I was back to normal. It took about a week to get all the way back feeling good. And ever since then, I've been able to put in the work in this offseason and feel pretty good. So it definitely was tough. It was bad timing because I didn't really have too much nagging stuff throughout the season like I, I played every game um except for when they rested me so to get that that little nick in the playoffs was tough for me but you know stuff happens um no no player goes unscathed from injuries or little nicks and nacks but I feel good you know um strength coach been working with him all season um good to get back to Denver and get back in the routine um, but I feel great. <clears throat> Brian Blackburn, Denver Stiffs. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Uh, we spoke to Will a little bit earlier, and he, he mentioned that uh, even without Jamal, we still want Mike to be Mike. We still want him to play the way that he, he always plays. Uh, does your mentality change at all on, on kind of changing what you do a little bit in, with, with Jamal out for at least the, the early part of the season? And, and does that go through your mind at all in, in how you play, the, the types of things that you do? Yeah, obviously we're looking forward to Jamal being back. Um, can't wait for that. He looks good. The times I've seen him, you know, in the weight room and things like that. But for me, I think, I mean, you guys know how it is for me. Even when I was getting five minutes, I still would play my game. I still shoot tough shots, shots I probably shouldn't have been shooting as a rookie. Um, but like, I've always viewed myself as like, I'm going to play my game no matter what. And if Jamal's out, I'm still going to play my game. Like I'm not going to force things, but the problem, the ball is probably going to end up in my hand more than, more than it did when he's playing, you know? So I'm going to just continue to be me, continue to try to utilize this, the stuff I've worked on this off season. Um, and I just look forward to, to making another jump this season because I've been working hard, so I'm excited for that to, 
to show and to be able to be even more of a leader for my team. All right, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Christos Saltes from SDNA Greece. Mike, you mentioned the jump that you would like to make uh, this season. Is an individual trophy back on your mind? For example, the most improved player or stuff like this? Dude, I'd rather be an all-star and an MVP and a champion than a most improved player. But I think uh, it's definitely an, an honor to be a most improved player. But I'm like my goals are bigger than, than that. I don't really think about most improved player. But at the same time, I think if you if you put in the work in the offseason, you know, you work on your weaknesses, things like that, you always have a chance for people to recognize that. Um, but I'd much rather be uh, having a ring at the end of the season than any individual award. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Mike. All right, appreciate you. <laughs>